sector. I think um, here in 2025, the world's rapidly changing in IJ nephropathy, where the idea of matching medical therapy to the actual um, data-driven pathogenesis of the disease has really made tremendous advances. And so we do have a number of proved agents, but we still see that with our patients, certainly four years ago before there was these new approved agents, we know that patients were progressing much more rapidly than we previously expected. Uh, the radar data was very, very clear in showing us that patients that we would have considered of normal risk before, really half of them were on dialysis within 10 years. And even patients who we considered low risk with only moderate proteinuria, a third of them required dialysis within 10 years. So that was not shocking to, to some, but shocking to many others. And we knew that we needed to do better. And in these years, we've seen that in some populations, using systemic corticosteroids and immunosuppression may be helpful but those agents are often associated with toxicity, can only be given for short periods of time and only have short-term benefits. Uh, similar with targeted budesonide, it really looked like a more well-tolerated therapy, but we only so far know how to use it for short periods of time and may only give temporary benefits to the patients. So I think we need further therapies and um, we've learned to really think about the different pathogenesis causes as a way to bring in new therapies such as complement blockade and blocking uh, endothelin. And I think we're starting to exercise those muscles very, very well and learn how to use these medications either individually to benefit patients, um, but are also finding that there's times when combination therapy is needed as well. So even with more and more drug approvals, uh, including this accelerated approval recently, um, we do have more medications, but there's still patients who have high-grade proteinuria after therapy, patients who we still see their GFR declining, their kidney function falling, and having more options and tools is really incredibly important stuff. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, when we look at the pathogenesis of IJ nephropathy, we really can look at upstream events and downstream events. And upstream events is the formation of antibodies and the deposition of immune complexes in the kidney. But clearly, once the kidney has immune complexes, it can do quite well because first degree relatives of patients with active kidney disease often have immune complexes in their kidney as well and do perfectly well. So it's probably the response to those immune complexes that play a role. And one of the large determinants of that looks to be upregulation of endothelin, a very powerful hormone that we generally consider responsible for vasoconstriction and hemodynamic changes. But in animal models and in human data, clearly associates with inflammation in the kidney as well and the sort of move forward from inflammation to scar is also driven by endothelin, particularly endothelin A. So having an endothelin A standalone um, receptor antagonist um, to try was great news. We had seen atrocentin used in thousands of patients in the SONAR trial. We knew it could be safe and well tolerated with minimal, if any, side effects. So really seeing that march through in IJ nephropathy was great. We first had evidence in sort of a low proteinuria group um, that atrocentin could effectively, and while being well tolerated, reduce proteinuria in a clinically effective range. And now with the results of a line, at least in part A, which looks at a randomized controlled trial of uh, more than a couple hundred patients, looking at nine month data to see if the proteinuria goal can be reached. And as you know, the proteinuria was reduced uh, with atrocentin by 38%, substantially more than in the placebo group. And that's a range of proteinuria reduction that's been very nicely associated 
with eventual stability of kidney function, which we'll see the full data when the two-year data is resulting. Uh, but of course, the agency looks at the totality of the data to say that this can actually positively impact our, our at-risk patients, and that's why they gave it accelerated approval.